So I have genital herpes, and this is the story of little Johnny. Now, Johnny reached out to me about an hour ago on Instagram, as I'm making this video now. And Johnny basically said, hey man, can I talk to you about something? I was recently with this girl, we had sex, the condom slipped off, um, I went to get herpes blood tested because the next morning she told me she had HSV2. I'm freaking out. What do I do? I like this girl. Did she lie to me? All of these very valid points and all of these things that I've heard countless times. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because the only reason why Johnny is freaking out is because he then knew the next morning that he was at risk. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. There's people out there who have herpes and don't disclose. I've made a lot of videos on different reasons, like no outbreak, don't think you have to disclose, or doesn't know they have herpes, or doesn't care that they have herpes, or just a bunch of different reasons, or maybe just too afraid, like um, Johnny's little girl. Now, Johnny probably didn't get herpes. Now, I cannot confirm this, but the girl was taking antivirals he had used a condom for some of the time, and it was a one-time thing. Now, I got herpes from a one-time thing, but they were probably having an outbreak and I didn't use a condom. So, higher chances. But the chance of someone getting the herpily derpilies on that sort of circumstances is unlikely. But yet, we still freak out and we still wonder, like, I gotta get checked. When will the symptoms show up? But they might never show up if you didn't contract it. So, what's the actual point of Johnny's story? Not everybody has herpes and not everybody doesn't disclose, but the amount of Johnnies out there right now that exist, but that will never know they were at risk, whether because their partner never tells them or whether their partner never knew that they themselves had herpes. We're not tested for it. Most of us don't know our status conclusively unless you actually have symptoms to then get diagnosed, in which case you have herpes. The blood tests suck. You can have little to no symptoms that you just sort of brush off. You can assume it was tested on STI panels even though it's not. And cold sores have always been herpes. If type 1 down there is herpes, type 1 up here has to be herpes and nobody bats an eye about that. So at the end of the day, most of us are risking herpes if we don't know the status of our partners. And if we don't know our own status, we're risking the transmission of herpes. Not everybody has herpes, just a large proportion of the population has either type 1 or type 2, and the only way for us to avoid the risk of herpes is for all of us to abstain from physical contact. Unfortunately, herpes has been built up to be the worst possible thing, somehow worse than HIV, somehow worse than your mother-in-law, all of these different things. It's built up to be to where Johnny feels like his life is over and Johnny's girl who didn't disclose out of fear of being seen a certain way or out of fear of rejection. What's the solution? I don't know. Herpes is extremely common. For most people it's going to cause little to no symptoms. It's not going to kill you. There's no cure for it. Doctors don't seem to care. But if you're out there watching right now and you're struggling with navigating your diagnosis, I wanted to share a video with you guys on how I overcame mine, three secrets. Click the first link in my description. Go ahead and watch it. See you in the next one.